Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another tea break fix. Hopefully a nice short repair. So get yourself a drink, take 10 minutes out of your day and let's see if we can fix this item here. So it's a little pocket mini calculator. Looks very old. That looks like it's got an LED display, I think, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's a, a VFD, a, a vacuum fluorescent display, because I have got a calculator years ago that had one of them. Anyway, this just turned up, I wasn't expecting it, and it says here, Dear Vince, you may remember me from a couple of years back when you bought the Simon Says Air game. That didn't produce any sound. Yes, I do remember. Here it is, full of dust, and now it is working still perfectly. Well, it says here that he basically bought this from an auctioneer's site, but there was only one picture, and he didn't realize that the batteries had blown in here. He's done his best to clean it up here, but it's still not working. So he said, I thought I'd send it to the only person I know who may be able to fix it on the pressure now. Uh, it will probably be quite easy and thus giving you a tea time fix video. I agree, this should be a perfect one for a tea break repair. I'm not looking for it back as it only cost me three pounds. So you can do whatever you wish with it. Keep up the good work with the channel and all that you do, kind regards, Gordon. So thank you, Gordon, for sending that in. So uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. And then if I have time at the end of the video, I'm gonna let you know what may be happening to some of the fixes on this video. So first of all, let's pop Sorry, not this video, well, this video and other videos as well. Do you know what, there's a nice little bit of weight to this. Okay, so there's nothing happening there at all. So my immediate thing in thinking is, there's been battery leakage up here, and what is very close to up here? The switch. So I reckon it might be as simple as corrosion in the switch. So let's take it apart, because he's done a good job of cleaning this up here. Let's take it apart and see whether we have any voltage going in from here, and then also see if we have continuity on the little switch. Oh, it can run off a power adapter as well. This reminds me of when I was a kid like uh, you know, old calculators from years ago. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, look at the way that's done there. Was oh, that broken? No, that's not broken. That's in two parts, isn't it? Or is it broken? No, it's snapped. It's snapped there. I don't think anybody would be using this on the uh, power connector anyway. All right, let's see what's happening. Oh, look at that, it's a vacuum display. I thought it was LED, it's not, it's a VFD display. Now, if that's gone, this is not gonna work, but, oh, isn't this interesting? So what do we have here? Where's the, uh, where's that purple wire going to? Purple wire must be going up to the switch. How does this work up here? Hmm, this is already very interesting. Okay, I think I understand the switch setup. So this black wire here has just popped off here because everything's so corroded, but it needs to go on there. So now what normally happens is when you have this together like so, these two, uh, this little brown wire that goes off to the board and the brown wire going off here are in contact with each other. And then when you plug in a DC jack, so there's continuity now between this point and this point. But when you plug in a DC jack, it forces this down to break the contact between the brown wire on the board and here, because we don't want the power going back up feeding the battery, because now the power's going directly onto here. So we need the power to go here and here. Now this was confusing me, but have a look here. You see the black wire goes off to here, well, it needs to then travel down the purple wire on the board here. So this is where we need our two points to be. And you can see we've got a positive and I think we've got a negative in there. So I think the purple, well, I don't think, I know the purple is negative because we know that this is a negative for the battery. Interestingly, although it all looks like metal, look, they're not in contact with each other. So this is in contact with the brown, but look, it's not in contact with the purple. Yep. Yeah. And somehow that purple is insulated from here, even though it looks to be touching here there must be some kind of plastic or something to insulate it. And if we go onto the purple one, it goes onto that little contact in the middle there. So I think what happens is when we turn this on up here, this purple wire, so right now the purple wire is off, yeah, 
you can hear it in here, but look, it's not getting to here. It's not getting to this contact. When we turn it on here, this purple wire should then go up to here and it's not. So we've got a fault with the switch in here. So I bet if we were to put voltage in here, it would probably liven up. But let's not spoil the video just yet. Let's see if we can get this fixed. So what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna just unsolder the wires here and uh, dunk it in some IPA and give it a real good wiggle around the place. I think when we push this switch up here, I think this purple one goes onto that metal bit in the middle and I think it's like this. So this is the negative of the battery and I think when we push the switch, it just moves that up to there. So we might be able to clean that. So that's the wires unsoldered, so let's swish it round in some IPA for a bit. Actually, before doing that, let's get some white vinegar all over it. I can see it fizzing up nicely on that little bit there. Now, you see that this side's worse than this side. Well, if I spray that side, it's not really doing much up here, is it? But now, watch this fizz here. Can you see it's gone all white and foamy? Now, the reason you put vinegar on is because vinegar's an acid, and remember, these batteries are alkaline. So by putting an acid on it, it will neutralize it. Yeah, it's even fizzing in here. There we go, check it out. I haven't even put it in IPA yet. So when it's off, we haven't got continuity between here and that purple where the purple wire was on that contact there. But now look, turn it on and boom, we've got continuity. Excellent. Right, I'm gonna keep moving the switch up and down for quite a while and then clean it all in IPA afterwards. So now I'm gonna get some deoxit and put it up there. Hopefully that will keep the contact. Just gonna sand these off just a little bit just to try and make the contacts a bit cleaner. And I'm just gonna clean up this little jack as well. And now I'm just gonna glue, super glue this connector back together. Again, it's not gonna be used, but we still need it to work because we need these two contacts always to be on each other. And then it means that if anybody in the future for some reason did want to use this as their calculator and uh, wanted the adapter to work, you've still got that option. I'm just going to use some super glue activator on it. Okay, so that's better now. I'm actually going to try to just burn with my soldering iron just the uh, outer bits together. Right, so when the DC jack goes in, you can still see it moves down and it's gonna break the contact. But yet, when there's no DC jack in, you can see that there's continuity there. Let's 
solder this back up and then give it a test. So what you're seeing here is me soldering it all back together. The main problem here was purely the switch. There was no contact through the switch. The DC jack that was broken was a secondary issue, but it wasn't actually causing a problem because it still had continuity. But at least now it should be stronger than when it was snapped in half. Now I am choosing to replace the black wire because that was the one where the corrosion was the worst. And it's actually traveled all the way through from the battery compartment all the way through to the power jack. So the corros corrosion has been sucked through that cable via capillary action and the whole thing is gone so when I'm stripping it back I can just tell it's not clean on the inside so it wouldn't make a very good solder joint so I'm replacing that wire but all the other wires are actually okay so once we have this all soldered back together fingers crossed it should work well I still need to clean it but let's just see if anything happens on here now Yay! Oh, my camera died mid. Yay! So I'll reenact it. Yay! It's working. There we go. Well, I'm just going to give it a quick clean up and finish up the video. Right, it's cleaned up nicely, but I've noticed there's some weird staining on this side of the screen there. Can you see? That side's all clear, but that's not. And also, I can't clean this sticker because then it's just going to rub away that completely. But I'm just going to use a little bit of Brasso just on that side bit just to see if I can polish it out. That's much better. So I've been messing around with this and it works absolutely fine. And considering it came out in 1975 to 1977, it's looking not bad for that age. So it's approximately 45 years old. It's got an eight digit display and everything on it works just fine. The only thing I was confused about was the percent button because on my calculator, I'll do things like this 50 plus 20 percent and it will come up with 60 because that is what the answer is but watch this it doesn't work so I was thinking there's a problem with a percent button but if I was to do this 600 times 10 percent then it will be 60 so it definitely does work 900 times 15 percent will be 135 yep so it's definitely working memory works as well 20 plus 20 equals 40 put that into memory and then if I was to do 50 plus memory you can see it comes up there. So massive thanks to Gordon for sending that out. That is like a perfect tea break repair in my opinion. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be packing up some of the items that I don't use and I'm gonna be sending them over to Anders who runs the My Mate Vince fan club over on Facebook. He's asked if it's possible to maybe buy some items off me so he can auction them off or give them away. Well, obviously he's doing me a favor, isn't he? By running a My Mate Vince fan club. So I'll just be sending these items over to him for free. And then hopefully he can give it away to various different people. You might have to pay the postage because obviously postage from Sweden to Australia, Sweden to America and stuff is going to be expensive. And there's going to be no items of real value there, but items like this and this and this, you know, maybe people will want it because they've seen the video on it. And if they're fans of the channel, maybe I can devalue it even more by putting a signature somewhere. And then, you know, it's a, a My Mate Vince official product. <laughs> so there we have it. Listen, thanks, Gordon. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Take care, everyone.